Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back in Ginger Canic. I hope everybody's having a great week. I am finally feeling a little bit better. I have been really ill for the last two weeks and man, it will do a number on you, this little bug that's going around. I had no energy to get out of bed. I mean, I would get up and walk across the room and have to sit back down. So thank you so much for the good well wishes. I have just, I'm just glad that I'm, you know, feeling good enough to do anything again. So that's awesome. But without further ado, I know what y'all are here for. Let's turn some of this shop trash into treasure. Now, although the shop does get in over 2,000 pieces of equipment every year, we don't fix 2,000 pieces. That's because there's lots of times that the machine is not worth fixing to the customer and it's just going to cost them too much. Now, the funniest thing about it, though, is that probably 90% of the equipment that comes into the shop that is not worth repairing, the customer was never the one that broke it. It's always somebody else, either their brother or their cousin or their sister's son's daughter. I don't know, but it's funny because nobody ever breaks it themselves. This guy dropped this blower off. He said that his wife had put straight gas in it, that she did not run it, but he put two cycle fuel in it and it wouldn't start. So he left it with me to see what was up with it. So what we have here today is a Husqvarna 150BT blower and this thing looks like it is almost brand new. The only thing wrong I could see is some scuff marks on the air filter cover. Other than that, it was barely ran at all. Now normally the first thing you would do would be check compression, but backpack blowers can be extremely deceiving when it comes to compression because they can be burnt up and still have like 150 pounds of compression, which is crazy, but they do. So the easiest thing for me to do is take the air filter cover off, take the base off, take the carburetor off. It's just a couple bolts and let's look inside the cylinder and see what's going on. That was weird. It just like made this total hissing sound. I don't even know about all that. Must be from the gas tank, I guess. Okay, let's look inside. So actually, I'm quite surprised. The intake side looks pretty beautiful. So I'm still a little hesitant on this one. I'm gonna pull the muffler just to make sure. God, this thing has barely been used. Oh no. Let's get a little closer look. So here is why you always pull the muffler because it can be quite deceiving on the inside. The compression can be deceiving, but this thing is just Post. Wow, that is so burnt up. So this brand new looking, really nice blower is completely burned up. I think she lied. So I did tell the customer that his backpack blower is burned up and he gave it to me. So maybe he gets a new one for Christmas. I don't know, but it's trash. The only way to fix it is to put a new piston and cylinder on it. And a lot of times it is too expensive to do that to a lot of these units. But what is surprisingly shocking to me when it comes to the Husqvarna parts, some of them are extremely expensive and some of them are extremely affordable. Like if I had to replace this carburetor, a lot of times it's a hundred to $120. That's a no go on a lot of things. But I know this blower is pretty much brand new. The carburetor is probably fine. The coil's fine. Everything else on it is virtually brand new other than the burned up piston and cylinder. Now, luckily, I'm able to get parts at cost. So it's totally worth it to me to put a new piston and cylinder on this. So let me go over and let you know what I'm going to be spending to get this fixed. All right, so for this project, we're gonna to have to have a brand new cylinder. The part number for the 150BT Husqvarna backpack blower, the cylinder is a 502-848701. There you go. 
we have a piston and that part number is a 5028496016. We have a cylinder gasket. That part number is a 5028488801. And a set of rings, and that is a 5028495501. And this is everything you need to get this bad boy going again. Now, you're probably gonna have to pay cost because you're not a dealer. I am not a Husqvarna dealer either, but I'm able to get, you know, parts at cost, which is pretty cool. So for the cylinder, actually, I'm, I only paid $19.59 for it. It lists for $27.99. Now the, the piston is sort of crazy how much more expensive it is than the actual cylinder, but I paid $26.39 for the piston and it lists for $37.99. And the rings, I paid $4.89, they list for $6.99, and the gasket, I paid $3.49, and it lists for $4.99. So virtually, I'm fixing this entire blower for about $55. If you were to do it yourself, you're probably gonna end up spending $80 to $90, but the fact is, that's still much cheaper than $329 plus tax for a new blower. Now, if this blower wasn't in such good condition, I probably would not be putting this money into it. It's a no-go usually for me at the shop to do a piston cylinder on something that's, you know, not pretty looking and still not in good shape. But this thing's virtually brand new. It's totally worth putting a piston cylinder and I bet I can get probably $200 out of it. So we're going to show you how to change the piston cylinder out all by yourself to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. So we already have the carburetor off. We already have the muffler off. The next thing I'm gonna do, remove the boot, take the plug out and get this uh, plate off the top of the cylinder. Next, I'm gonna remove the carburetor mounting block. Now, all of these screws on this particular unit have um, T27 heads. Now there are four bolts holding the cylinder to the engine base. So we're just going to go down, there's holes in the top of the cylinder to go through to get these out. Once you have your four bolts loosened up, you can actually just pick up the entire cylinder. Come over to the side a little bit to get past this plastic part. We're just gonna keep pulling it on off here. Ooh, that thing's stuck. get a closer look at that. All right, there it is. That is what happens when you run your machine with no oil in it. Wow. Now, I, I can tell from the video that it looks a lot worse than it actually is, but I really don't feel any divots in the cylinder at all. I probably could have got away with just changing out the piston and rings. But since I'm selling this, I didn't want to chance it. I just want to go all new. And it literally was 20 bucks for me to get this. And it's totally worth it for me if I'm going to resell it. So let's change it out. All right. The next thing we need to do is get this piston off. And to do that, there is a clip inside of here. And I'm going to show you there's a little divot here that we're going to dig in to where we can grab this clip. Now I don't want to lose it because the new piston I got does not come with a new wrist pin and clip. So I'm going to try to be careful and not let this go wing on me and uh, get this out of here. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to come down on it. That came out pretty easy. All right, to get the wrist pin out, it's not always fun. They are very tight in there a lot of times. Now I have these handy dandy curved needle nose pliers that I'm gonna be able to go in behind and push it through while I'm using a little bit of leverage here. And hopefully it'll come out. Um... Now that I have it out a little bit, I'm gonna try to grab it and see if I can pull it. There we go. Now we're able to pull it straight up. And our clip is still on the inside, so that's good. All right, so next you don't wanna lose 
there's two retainers holding in the needle bearing. And we're gonna pull that out, check it, make sure it's still in good shape and uh, oil it up really good before we put it back in. Next, I'm gonna remove the leftover gasket and I'm gonna add some two cycle oil. I'm just going to rub it on the inside in here just because I know it's gonna smoke a little bit when I start it up, but that way I'm, you know, for sure that everything's lubed up correctly right off the bat. All right, next we're going to put our rings onto our piston. Now, this is probably the most confusing part to people of which way the rings actually go. Now, on this particular one, the rings are exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one goes on top and which one goes on bottom. But when you do put them on, there is an up or down to the ring itself. If you can see this little divot right here, those points going down when they close, they're going to go around this little pin inside of the piston that actually keeps it in place. So when you put them on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those are, are facing downward. Now, when we go to put them on to the piston, the bottom one, the it will wrap around this pin right here. It'll be on each side, I'll show you here in a second. And the other one, about 30 degrees over, is right here. And that way, you know, you always have compression because they're always offset to each other. All right, so I got the bottom one in. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to put the top one in. Now there is a tool for this, but most of you are probably not gonna have it. So you just want to start it with those divots going downward right on the side of it and hold it in there as you come around carefully. And get it inside, just like that. Okay, so I got everything good and oiled inside. I did oil my bearing. We're going to push it back in. And we're gonna put the retainers back on each side. Next, we're going to put our piston back on with the side that has the clip uh, pin inside of it already towards the back with the arrow pointing towards the exhaust. And I'm just going to coat the piston lightly with two cycle oil. For future reference, depending on what unit you're working on, sometimes you have to put the gasket, the cylinder head gasket on before you put the, pist the piston back in place because it will not fit after you have the piston where it needs to be. This one, it doesn't matter. You can do it afterwards. So we're just going to set that right there and then we're gonna put our cylinder back on. Okay, so ideally the engine would be out a little bit more so this is easier to put on, but you know, I'm uh, cutting a little corner here. So whenever I go to put the cylinder back on, you wanna make sure that the intake side is going towards where it's going to end up. Now on this one, I can't come straight down on it because this plastic is in the way, but I'm gonna go ahead. I've already oiled up the inside of my cylinder and it's tapered on the inside here. So it's gonna actually compress the rings as it goes. So that's a plus. So I do not need to have my ring compression tool for this. Um, also, when you go to do it, make sure that your rings are lined up, centered on these piston uh, pins right here to where whenever the ring compresses, it will go around that piston pin correctly. And we're just gonna try to get this thing on. Let's see. Come at it like this, sideways. straightened up. There, we got it on. All right, let's put our screws back in. All right, so I have my cylinder set back down on my gasket, but before we go to tightening it down, I have my screws sitting in here, but I do want to use a little bit of thread lock on these. And I'm going to come on down with them. I'm going to start to screw them in. I can come up just to make sure yeah, I'm all lined up. You don't want to mess your gasket up. And once you get these front two started, the back two will be easier to get in. Back 
together now. Now we just got to make sure it runs. It's going to probably smoke just a little bit from that oil that I lubed the cylinder up with, but I think that uh, we've got a $200 blower here. turn some more shop trash into treasure. I think I could totally get $200 out of this thing. I mean, I definitely probably have another air filter cover laying around the shop somewhere that's not scratched up like this one. And this thing is going to be virtually brand new. So I'm going to try to get 200 bucks and I'll let you know when it sells and how much I do get out of it. Thank you all so much for tuning back into Jacanic. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Jacanic or on Instagram at The Real Jacanic or find our website at Jacanic.com where you can find Jacanic hoodies, long sleeves, and t-shirts. Thanks again. Have a great day.